This video is brought to you by Spirit.tf. Spirit.tf is an automated trading site that buy and sell thousands of items with some very reasonable prices. As you guys know, I use this site all the time, so be sure to check them out in the description below. Hey guys, it's Pyro here, and this is a video that you guys have been wanting for a while now. So here it is, my complete guide to unusual trading. As with all of my guides, there will be a menu in the description with timestamps, so feel free to skip to the section that you want to learn. Before I go on with this tutorial, I'm just going to assume that you have a pretty advanced knowledge of trading, but this guide is made for people who are new to unusual trading. If you are an experienced trader, this video might not be so helpful. In this video, I'm going to teach you all the knowledge you need to start trading with unusuals, and then I'll teach you how to apply that knowledge in the unusual trading economy. But anyway, let's get right into the video. Firstly, I'll talk a little bit about why you would want to get into unusual trading in the first place. The main reason why unusual trading is so good is because you have a lot more room for profit. Instead of making a profit of maybe a REC or a REF, you can potentially be making keys worth of profit from each unusual trade. If you eventually decide that you want to stop playing TF2, you can sell your unusuals and keys for real life money through PayPal. Another reason why you might want to trade unusuals is because you get really cool looking hats. Being able to trade for items that you actually like to wear is a good way of encouraging yourself to go further. One thing that you'll notice once you start trading with unusuals is that it's typically a lot slower than normal trading, so I ask that you go into this with having a lot of patience. So how can you start unusual trading? Well, you could either go from nothing and slowly work your way up to around 10 keys, or you could just buy 10 keys off the Steam market. I guess what I'm trying to say here is that you need a minimum of around 10 keys. You can go a little bit less, but I would recommend having at least 10. I just want to say that there is no shame in buying some keys to get you started. If it costs around $25 to buy some keys at the start, you can easily make that money back once you start unusual trading. The next thing that I want to talk about are the different effects. All of the effects in TF2 are brought out in generations. Usually, the earlier the generation, the better, but this isn't always the case. For example, Vivid Plasma is definitely not better than Nebula, even though Vivid Plasma was one of the first unusual effects in the game, and Nebula is one of the newest effects. But as I said, usually, earlier generations sell a little bit easier than later gen. I won't go into that much detail about all the effects, but I highly recommend going and checking out the video made by Ben from The Virtual Economist. He did a really good job at talking about each effect in the game so far, and its sellability. I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. Typically, if you like an effect, chances are that someone else will too. There are some effects that the community consider really good, and others that the community don't really like as much. A good place to see the value of the different effects is the Backpack.tf Unusual Effect price list. This shows all of the effects in the game, as well as the average prices on them. This isn't necessarily the order of best effect to worst effect, because most of it is personal opinion, but it's a good place to get an idea. So how do people decide if an unusual is good? There are three main factors that will determine whether an unusual is good or bad, and these are the class, the effect, and also the actual hat itself. Soldier and Scout unusuals tend to be the highest tier, followed by Demo Man, Pyro, Medic, Sniper, and Spy, which are all pretty much equal, but Heavy and Engineer hats are definitely the lowest tier because not many people main those classes. All class and multi-class unusuals are usually the most expensive because you can use it on lots of different classes. The effect is another really important thing because this is the main reason why you would want to buy an unusual in the first place. I've already talked enough about the effects, but a general rule of thumb is that if you personally like an effect, chances are that other people will too. And finally, the hat is another really big factor in deciding if an unusual is good or not. Obviously, some hats look much better than other hats, and this will either raise or lower the price if the community thinks the hat looks good. These three factors are all really subjective. Some people might love heavy hats with nuts and bolts, but the vast majority of the trading community has decided that some hats are much less valuable than others. Another thing that might affect the price of an unusual is if it's themed. An example is the Cold Killer with Blizzardy Storm because it's a snow hat with a snow effect, or the Hard Counter with Stormy Storm because it's an umbrella hat with a rainy effect. And to finish this section up, I just want to cover one last factor that might affect whether an unusual is good or not, and this is the non-physical aspects. I know I'm talking about non-physical items, but when I say non-physical, I mean the history, the level, and the cleanliness of the unusual. These don't change how the hat looks at all, but they can sometimes change the desirability, and even sometimes the value of an unusual. Let's say there are two identical unusuals for sale for the exact same price. They are both exactly the same in every way, but one has a history with only a few people, and the other one has a super long history. Obviously, the shorter history is better. The level of the hat also might make the hat more sellable. If it's a special collector's level like 1, 42, 69, 99, or 100, it might be more desirable than a regular level. The level definitely won't change the price though, it might just be something that the seller will highlight in its advertisement. And finally, the cleanliness will affect the value of the hat. Duped unusuals are much less desirable than clean ones. Some people might not care, but the majority of people do, so it's often best to avoid duped unusuals as best you can. 
The next thing that I'd like to cover is trading websites. There are three main sites that I'm going to talk about, and they are Backpack.tf, TF2Outpost, and Trade.tf. Backpack.tf is a really great website to use to advertise your trades, and is also where the community suggests prices for all unusuals. If you want to price check an unusual, just go to the top of the page and hover over the pricing tab, and then click browse by item. Then you can search for the hat that you want, click on it, and then hover over the effect that you want to price check. Keep in mind that this is not the absolute price of an unusual. Don't be surprised to see people selling unusuals for higher or lower than the price listed on Backpack.tf. Just use this website as a price guide. And remember, all of these prices are community suggested, and it's pretty easy for someone to change the price of an item if they can prove that enough people are buying it for that price. There's also a lot of items that don't have prices. If you're new to unusual trading, I would personally stay clear of unpriced unusuals. Once you become more experienced with pricing and trading unusuals, then you can start to buy unpriced unusuals. But as I said, if you are new to unusual trading, don't ever trade with unpriced unusuals. TF2 Outpost is another really good place to advertise your trades, and you can also find quick sells. I find Outpost to be one of the best places to offer on unusuals and for other people to offer on your unusuals. One really useful part of this site is the search feature. If you search wildcard and then change the quality to unusual, then in the notes section type quicksell, it will search for every unusual trade with the word quicksell in it. Just keep in mind that some trades might have the words this is not a quicksell, and because it still has the word quicksell in it, it will still come through in the search. Just use your common sense with deciding whether it is or isn't a quicksell. If you want to price check an unusual that you see, just click on the item and copy the original ID, and then in the URL bar type backpack.tf slash items slash and paste the numbers at the end. Here you can see if the unusual is duped, how long the history is, and if you hover over the unusual, you can see its price. And the last website that I want to talk about is trade.tf. This website is probably the best website for finding quick sell unusuals. It basically pulls all the trades from backpack.tf and outpost, and will calculate the percentage of profit that you would make on the trade. In order to use this website, you need to add trade.tf to your Steam username. Once you've done that, sign out and sign back in again, and then hover over the trading tab at the top and click good deals. Change the quality to unusual and then click search. This will show you every unusual sale that has room for you to make profit. Obviously, not all of these are good deals. Some of them might only be a few ref off of backpack.tf price, but some of them might be around 30% off, and that's what you need to look for. A quick sell price is usually a 30% discount off the backpack.tf price. Keep in mind that sometimes it will show trades where the profit percentage is in the thousands. Obviously, the person that's selling this hat isn't wanting just one key, so just use your common sense before making that trade. Before you trade with someone for their unusual, make sure to investigate the trade by checking other sellers on backpack.tf and outpost. Check the history and check if it's duped. Don't just see a 30% discount and immediately trade the guy. Do some research before committing to a purchase. Another really useful website is the percentage discount calculator. All you need to do is type in the unusual's price in keys and then type the percentage off. So let's say the unusual is worth 20 keys and the discount is 30% because it's a quick sell. That means that you need to offer 14 keys. The next topic is all about trade servers. There aren't too many unusual trade servers, but the most popular ones at the moment include Vatican City and Firepowered. These servers might not exist a year from now, so just keep that in mind. I would personally recommend Vatican City because it has some pretty cool people on there. Also, Firepower doesn't allow people to advertise quick sells, which in my opinion is completely fucking ridiculous. If you want to find unusual trade servers, just go to TF2 and in the server browser type unusual. Make sure there is no latency filter because that will open your chances of finding an unusual trade server. When you do get onto an unusual trade server, advertise that you are buying quick sell unusuals. When you eventually get a trade, use your manners and be as nice as possible. Chances are, if you're nice to people, they might give you a better deal. You really need to have patience when you're on trade servers. It takes a really long time to get offers, so just have as much patience as possible. In this next section, I'll cover trading language and the words that unusual traders use. You really need to know the unusual trading dictionary before you go out and start unusual trading for yourself. The first and probably the most common word is pure. This refers to keys. If someone says they're selling their unusual for 50 keys pure, this means that they want exactly 50 keys. The next word is clean. This basically means that the hat is not duped. Another word that you'll see a lot is B slash O. B slash O means buyout. This is the price that the seller will happily sell the unusual for. For example, if someone has a buyout of 100 keys, this means if you go to them with 100 keys, they will sell their unusual to you. The next word is CO. This stands for current offer, or some people call it closest offer. This is basically the offers that the person has had so far. So if someone has a current offer of 70 keys and their buyout is 100 keys, don't bother offering 60 keys because they have obviously declined 70 keys before you. The next word is overpay. Let's say someone is selling an unusual for 50 keys pure or 75 keys in overpay. This means that they will accept 50 keys in pure or 75 keys in unusual value. Overpay is basically a way of buying unusuals with unusuals of slightly higher value. 
Another word that you'll see a lot is quick sell. This is when someone is selling an unusual for pure at a discounted price. Quick sellers are never interested in other unusuals. The reason why they are quick selling might be because they want to get some keys to buy another item, or they might want to sell their keys on the Steam market for the Steam Summer Sale, for example. There isn't really a set price for a quick sell discount, but as I said before, it's usually around 30% off. The next word that I'll talk about is one for one. This is pretty much just like swapping unusuals. If you have an unusual and someone says they're willing to one for one with their unusual, it basically means that they want to swap unusuals. Another word that you need to know is god tier. God tier unusuals are super expensive hats with really good effects. Usually god tiers cost upward of 500 keys. And the last word that I want to talk about is cancer. This refers to really low hats with really bad effects. You'll probably start trading with cancerous unusuals because they're the ones that cost around the 10 key mark. The next topic that I want to talk about is negotiating. People always ask me how I get such good deals, and most of it comes down to how I talk to people in the trade. So in this section, I'll cover the do's and don'ts of negotiating with someone. Let's say you're in a trade and someone is willing to give you a bit of a discount on their unusual. In this example, the unusual is worth 25 keys. You go onto the percentage calculator, and the price that you want to look at paying is around 17.5 keys. So your goal in this trade is to get that person to come down as close to 17.5 keys as possible. Firstly, never say how many keys you have. Obviously, they can just go and check for themselves, but if you tell them how many keys you have, it shows that you can potentially pay the price that they want. So you offer 17.5 keys pure. They then come back and say the lowest they can do is 22 keys. I would personally not offer any more until I need to. If you straight away come back and say, okay, you know what, I can do 18 keys, it shows them that you're weak and that you can easily change your price. So stay firm at 17.5 keys. They might come down to 20 keys. That's when I would say I can do 18 keys. One thing that I see a lot of people do is saying that this unusual is their dream unusual and that they've wanted it for so long. I guess the people who do this are wanting the seller to have some sort of sympathy for them and give them a good deal, but never show how emotionally attached you are to the unusual. If you say to them how much you like the hat, then they'll know they can make you pay a little bit of a higher price. The mindset that you should have is to stay calm and don't act too desperate for the unusual. So let's say this person comes down to 19 keys. I would then offer 18 keys in 10 ref. Let's say the person accepts the trade, the items come through, and the deal is done. The takeaway that I want you guys to know is to never show emotion, stay firm, and always wait until the other person changes their price before you change yours. I actually have a lot of fun with these mind games in trades. It actually becomes quite tactical, and if you know what you're doing, you can end up getting some really good deals. One little tip that I have for you guys is to always use good grammar and punctuation when talking to people through the trade chat. If you speak formally, then they'll assume that you're not just some 10-year-old kid. Try and behave and speak in a way that shows your intelligence. Another really important thing when it comes to unusual trading is checking if an unusual is duped or not. The website that you need in order to find duped items is backpack.tf. There are multiple ways that you can come to this page that will tell you if the unusual is duped. If you're in a trade with someone, click on their profile picture and copy their Steam profile URL and paste that into the backpack.tf search bar. This will bring up their backpack and you can just hover over the unusual to price check it. Sometimes if they have a custom URL, backpack.tf will have some problems finding their backpack. So if they do have a custom URL, copy the link and paste it into the Steam ID finder. And then paste that code into the backpack.tf search bar instead. But once you're in their backpack, just hover over their unusual and click history. If you're on TF2 Outpost, click on the item, copy the original ID, and then in the URL bar, type backpack.tf slash items slash, and then paste the original ID there. But I'm pretty sure that's all the ways that you'll need to check for duped items. The next thing that I'm going to teach you is how to price check unusuals. The method that I use is firstly checking if the unusual is duped, and then hovering over the unusual to see its price. If you did skip the section on finding duped unusuals, make sure to visit the menu below and go back to it. Another way of checking the price of an unusual is by going to backpack.tf, hovering over the pricing tab, and then clicking browse by item. Search for the hat that you want to price check, and then you can see the value of all the effects. Keep in mind that backpack.tf is just a price guide. Always check the other sellers on backpack.tf classifieds and on outpost. If everyone is selling it for way less than backpack.tf price, chances are that it's a really hard hat to sell, so just keep that in mind. Also, check if the price is outdated. If the price is a year old or even older, then I would really try to research for myself to find a more current and up-to-date price. Check other sellers and see what they're selling it for. Another thing to keep in mind is that some unusuals are inflated. For example, the Morning Glory Dreadnought is valued at almost three times as much as Burning and Scorching. If an unusual effect like this is worth way more than some other high-tier effects, chances are it's inflated. If an unusual is inflated, it's usually really hard to sell, because if I were to go and buy a Dreadnought, I would see how other effects like Scorching, Burning, Sunbeams, and the Cloudy effects are all way cheaper than Morning Glory, and I would probably just buy a better effect for a lower price. The next topic that I want to cover is how to actually make profit with unusual trading. 
So this section is probably the most important section of this video, and it will put all of your knowledge into practice. In order to make profit, you want to buy unusuals for a discount of around 30% off, and then resell the unusual for around the price on backpack.tf. It's almost impossible to sell an unusual for its full price in pure. I've only had a few experiences where this has been the case, so it's extremely rare for anyone to pay full price in pure. You might have to trade with other unusuals and one for one a lot, but that's okay. As long as you think you're slowly making profit, then you're on the right track. You should have a listing on Outpost saying that you're buying quick sell unusuals for about 30% off. Usually, you'll have to go out and find the good deals, they don't always come to you. A typical day for me is I wake up, check all of my trades on Outpost, and bump my listings on Backpack.tf as well as Outpost. I also check Trade.tf for any good deals. A lot of the time, you'll chase down a deal and it will end up not working out, but that's completely fine. So let's say you do get an unusual you bought for a discount of 30% off. There are two things that you can now do. You can either list it for Backpack.tf price and try to get around that price for pure, or you can just re-quick sell it. The only hats that you should try to sell for Backpack.tf price are the really nice unusuals or the hats that you think someone would actually want to pay full price for. If you have a cancerous unusual or an unusual with a really bad effect or a duped unusual or all of the above, then I would recommend trying to re-quick sell it. As I said before, even if it is only one key profit, profit is always profit. One thing that you really need to consider is how long it could take to sell for full price. Let's make up an example and say that you have a 15 key unusual that you bought for 11 keys. In this example, you have no more keys to buy quick sells with, so you really need to get keys in order to buy other unusuals. You need to consider how long it could take to get 15 keys pure. If you went and re-quick sold it for 12 keys and made one key profit, you could go and buy another unusual, re-quick sell it, buy another unusual, re-quick sell it a few more times before you even sold that original unusual for 15 keys pure. So re-quick selling is actually not a bad idea, and I find it to actually make more profit for you, even though you're not selling it for the full price. The last topic that I'd like to talk about is what to look out for when trading. Scammers are probably the major threat in TF2 trading. There's lots of techniques that are used by scammers to try to get your items. I'm not proud to admit it, but I've actually fallen for a scam before and ended up losing over $200 worth of items. Scams in TF2 usually involve PayPal or fake gift vouchers, basically anything where you're giving the items to them for things outside of TF2. There are quite a few scam techniques out there in trading, so you just have to be really careful and always double check the trade. Another thing to keep an eye out for are fishes. These are basically fake accounts that will add you with a link to a website where you'll be required to input your username and password for your Steam account. They usually say things like, hey, can you add my friend, he wants to trade. Then they'll leave a Steam community URL link, for example. These websites look a lot like the real thing, but if you do end up putting your information into the site, the information will be then sent to the fisher, and you might have your Steam account stolen. If you do actually input your information, just change your password and you should be fine. I don't know how common these phishing links are anymore since the release of mobile authentication, but they might still be out there, so just be really careful when you're clicking links from people who you don't really trust. Okay, so let's just revise everything that I covered in this video. The reason why you would want to get into unusual trading is because your profit margin is a lot higher than if you were trading with normal items. You need about 10 keys in order to start unusual trading. You learnt about the different effects, what makes an unusual good, the various trading websites, the language, how to negotiate, checking for duped unusuals, how to actually make profit, as well as what to look out for when trading. I just want to say again really quick, always make trades that will make you profit. Even if it is only one key of profit, just never go backwards. Never sell an unusual for less than what you paid for it. As I said in the how to make profit section, buy an unusual for around 30% off and then sell it for more. Don't expect to sell it for full price in pure keys, you might have to just sell it for a few keys higher than what you bought it for. You might even have to trade your unusual for other unusuals multiple times before even seeing keys. But as long as you make profit from each trade, you'll slowly become more and more wealthy in TF2. Anyway guys, thanks for watching this video and I really hope it helped you. I've tried to cover everything to do with unusual trading, but if you do have a question, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll do my best at answering as many as I can. I just want to remind you guys to have as much patience as possible. It takes a really long time to trade with unusuals, but it can be really rewarding in the end. Try to always make trades that you feel happy with. One of the worst feelings in trading is having remorse after a trade. And always make sure that you're comfortable with the trade before you accept it. Also, keep in mind that some trades just happen completely by luck. I've made trades where I know I was just in the right place at the right time. Thanks again for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like, subscribe for more of my future videos, and I hope you have a nice day. Thank you.